How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donu here again. This time we're going to take a look at some practice problems, namely 2.3, the modern atomic structure, and 2.4, atomic weights. So let's get into it. All the atoms of a particular element have the same what? Well, what makes them specifically carbon atoms? What is it? Like, how do we know that we're defining, we're talking about carbon? Well, it has to do with the number of protons, which also tells you what its atomic number is. So those are the features you're looking for. What does all carbon isotopes, what do all carbon isotopes have in common? The atomic number and the number of protons. All right. The atomic mass unit is currently based on assigning an exact integral mass in AMU to an isotope of carbon 12. How are we defining what one AMU is? We're saying carbon 12 is exactly 12 atomic mass units. Exactly. So that's how we're defining what that is. Hasn't always been carbon, but that's what we're going with now. How many electrons, protons, and neutrons are in an atom of xenon with that notation? All right, well, let me rewrite it. So we got xenon. This 132 is the mass number. It tells us the mass, which is protons and neutrons. This number down here, the 54, is the atomic number which is the number of protons. Now this thing's neutral, so I know that protons equals electrons because it's got no charge. So protons is gonna be 54. Because it's neutral, we must have 54 electrons as well. But to get the neutrons, well, we know that the mass equals protons and neutrons, so neutrons must equal the mass minus the number of protons, which is going to equal 132 minus 54, which gives us 78. So we have 78 neutrons, 54 electrons, and 54 protons. An element X has two naturally occurring isotopes, the masses and atomic mass units, and percent abundances of the isotopes are given in the table below. What is the average atomic mass for this element? Whoop. So the way that you do this is got to remember the weighted average atomic mass is going to equal the percent abundance of isotope 1 times the mass of isotope 1 plus the percent abundance of isotope 2 times the mass of isotope 2. If you had more isotopes, you would just keep following that same pattern, but then divide that by 100. So I'm going to get... 35.16 times 31.16 plus 64.84 times 34.30 and then all divided by 100. So now I can just pick up my calculator, do a little plugging and chugging, and my calculator tells me it's 33.195976. But if I take a look, at my numbers, I want to keep four sig figs. So I go, all right, one, two, three, four. I look over. This is going to round to be 33.20 AMU as my final answer. Cool. Problem five Which atom has the most neutrons? So this, you got to do a bunch of math. You got to look up the atomic numbers for all of these elements. So potassium. Well, its mass is 39 minus its atomic number, which is how many protons there are, and I get 20 neutrons. Argon, do the same thing. Its mass is 40 minus its atomic number of 18. Tells me that there's 22 neutrons in argon 40. Phosphorus 30 tells me I have a mass of 30 minus the atomic number of 15 for phosphorus, and that tells me I got 15 neutrons. Calcium has a mass of 40 minus its atomic number of 20, which tells me that that one has 20 neutrons. And chlorine, last but not least, chlorine 37 has a mass of 37 minus 17 as its atomic number, and you end up with 20. So which one has the most? Choice B. All right, six. Silver has two naturally occurring isotopes. Given information right there. 
It says the average atomic mass of silver is 107.8682 AMU. What is the fractional abundance of the lighter isotope? And the hint is you'll need two equations. So the first equation is going to be that the weighted average atomic mass equals, I'm going to rewrite it a different way, the decimal of one times the mass of one. Now the decimal is equal to the percent divided by 100. Per cent is per 100, so if we're talking about the decimal out of 1, you take the percent and divide by 100, and that's how you get that. So uh, decimal 1 times mass 1 plus decimal 2 times mass 2. All right, they want to know the lighter isotope, so instead of saying 1 and 2, I'm going to say lighter and heavier. So the decimal of the heavier one the decimal of the lighter one. All right, well, they don't tell me the abundance. I got to figure out the abundance. But they tell me my mass. But I got two. What am I going to do? Well, I also know that the decimal of the light one plus the decimal of the heavy one has to equal one. It's the same thing as saying the percent of the light one plus the percent of the heavy one has to equal 100% because it's saying that it's only made up of two isotopes. All right, so now I got two equations and two unknowns. I don't know either percentage, but I got two equations and two unknowns. So now we just rearrange. All right, I got to pick one of these equations and I got to rearrange it so I can later substitute it into the other one. So I'm going to do this. The decimal of the heavy equals one minus the decimal of the light. So now wherever I have the decimal of the heavy in that first equation, I can substitute this into it. So I'm going to do that right here. So I get weighted average mass. It's going to equal the decimal of the light times the mass of the light plus the decimal of the heavy weight. I'm substituting that in one minus the decimal of the light times the mass of the heavy. So now I have the weighted average mass, they told me. I know the mass of the light, I know the mass of the heavy. Now the only thing in that equation I don't know is the decimal of the light. So now I gotta do a little algebra. Let me try to move stuff around. Let's see, weighted average mass. <sighs> what am I gonna do, how did I do this? This one's kind of much, I can do. Oh, let me distribute this. I got mass of the heavy minus mass of the heavy times the decimal of the light. So when I subtract the mass of the heavy from both sides, I get wham minus the mass of the heavy equals the decimal of the light times the mass of the light minus the mass of the heavy times the decimal of the light. So from this, I can factor out decimal of the light, which will remove that. And in the parentheses, I'm going to end up with the mass of the light minus the mass of the heavy. Okay, so now if I want the decimal of the light by itself, divide both sides. I'm running out of room. Mass of the light minus mass of the heavy. That cancels this. And it's going to equal the decimal of the light. I need to uh, make room. So now I've rearranged it. I got decimal of the light all by itself and all the other numbers I know. And since I'm running out of room, I'm not going to show that. But when I plug and chug, I get 0 0.51835 as my fractional abundance for the light. Cool. So, yeah, I hope you found that helpful. It was tough. If not, I'm sorry. Come back.